Hello and welcome back. If you're just now coming to this video for the first time, I recommend going back and looking at some of my earlier videos in this series. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to start analyzing uh, data that might be in a text file. A lot of the times, if you're a digital humanist, your data is going to be a long, lengthy text. What we're going to be working with in this video is this bit of information I grabbed or data I grabbed from uh, Gutenberg.org, which I'll provide a link for in the description down below. It is the entire text of Alice in Wonderland. And if you are an avid listener to my channel, you'll know that in another series uh, in which I explore textual analysis, I work with Alice in Wonderland. In the future, uh, I think next week, I'm going to be having a whole series on natural language processing, which is going to be some really in-depth methods for analyzing and extracting important data from a text, and we're going to use Alice in Wonderland as the base text. So with all that said, all I've done for this video is I have prepared it in two ways. The first way is I've just simply created or copied all of that information into a text file, which I'm calling 26 underscore data dot txt. And I've just, because I hate typing out these lengthy file names um, in real time while I'm making the video, I went ahead and I just did this in advance. So all this is, is it's the entire text of Alice in Wonderland. And what we're going to do in this video is just something very basic. And I'm going to show you a way in which you can kind of start to analyze the data that is in a single text file. And some of the initial steps you need to make towards cleaning up that data to actually begin analyzing it in really any way that you want. I'm not going to go through and do detailed textual analysis on this text. Instead, I'm just going to show you some of the basic ways to start thinking about texts as data and how you can start extracting kind of some important information from that data pretty quickly and with Python. If you are interested in kind of all the ways to analyze textual data, I recommend checking out my playlist on uh, using Python to do just that, Python for textual analysis. And I also encourage you to keep on checking back because I'm going to be doing a lot of videos in the future on textual analysis and different methods we can use, different modules we can use for performing higher end textual analysis on texts. This video is just the basics. So let's jump right in. We've got our file name up here as an object that's a string, and we're going to simply read in that file. We're going to say with open, and we're going to say file name because I am setting it up as a file name up here. So it's just going to read all of that information in and grab this text for us. And if you remember correctly, we need to pass in another argument. We need to say R because I'm not writing to this file. I'm just trying to read it. And I'm going to open it up as I'm just going to open it up as F. And what I'm going to say is data is equal to F dot read. And what this is going to do is it's simply going to load all of this text file into memory as a single object. So when I print off data, oh, helps if I spell it correctly, uh, we get the entire text file printed off in the output. And if you notice, my output now is a lot bigger. And the reason for that is because uh, someone commented, actually several people commented, and wanted to see these screens kind of blown up a little bit more. So that's what I'm doing. So we've now got the entire text of Alice in Wonderland loaded into memory. We can do some pretty cool stuff with, stuff with it now. I want to focus on one simple problem in this video. And you have the tools, whether you realize it or not, to actually solve this problem. What I want to do is I want to know how many chapters there are in Alice in Wonderland. How many chapters there are. Now pause this video, look at the data for yourself, and think to yourself how you might solve this problem, and then return to this video once you think you have a solution, and we'll see if it lines up with how I'm going to do it. And remember, in Python, there's always multiple solutions to every problem. So just because I'm doing it this way doesn't mean it's the only way to do it, nor does it mean it's the right way to do it. There might be faster methods. Whatever works, works. But remember, when you're programming, you want to achieve two things. You want to achieve clean code, that is the little, most little amount of code written per line, so long as that code is still legible and easy to read, and you want to write efficient code, so code that can run quickly. I'm going to show you how to do both of those in this video. So pause now, try to analyze this data set, and see if you can figure out how to really break it down by chapter. Okay, hopefully you've found a solution. So as a data scientist or just a person who is just analyzing data, one of the things that you want to look for is patterns. So if I wanted to analyze this text and see how many chapters there are, I really don't have a way to just count it. I have to manipulate the data in this file. Now, if I'm looking at it, I notice that chapter is appears right before each chapter. 
So if I do chapter that way, that way, that way, that way, that way, I can actually go through and see this. That it, each time it does this, it actually breaks down that many times. And if I just do control F, I can see that I have 12 results for the chapter. But that's not what I asked you to do. I asked you to find a Pythonic way to find that answer. Well, the way in which we can do this is we can simply use our uh, count function. So we can say data.count, and we're going to look for every time the word chapter appears, and we want to print that off. And when I do that, I see that my answer is 12. And the reason why I'm able to do that is because I am taking that data object, which is just a really long string, and I'm counting how many times the word chapter actually appears. And I see that it appears 12 times. And uh, I didn't actually double check this, but I'm pretty sure there's only 12 uh, chapters in Alice in Wonderland. So that's one way in which you can actually solve this problem. And I just double checked and uh, there actually are only 12 chapters. Here's the next problem. So I now know in Python how many chapters are in Alice in Wonderland just by analyzing the text. Now imagine if this was a problem that you didn't know the answer to, you had to actually find it. This is how you would do it. Let's say I wanted to actually start working with Alice in Wonderland um, piece by piece, chapter by chapter. How might I go about doing that? Well, if I know that every chapter begins with chapter, chapter in capital letters, I can think of a few different ways in which I can split this up. And the answer's in that response, split. So I'm gonna make a new object here. Actually, I'll leave this so you can kind of work alongside me. So I'm gonna just comment this out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say chapters, oops, chapters, let me close this out. I think it's messing me up there, there we go. Chapters is going to be equal to data dot split. And we're gonna split it by this word chapter. And now when I print this off, I'll have a, you won't be able to see this, but I'll have a long list. However, a problem still remains. What do I notice about this that's an issue? Well, I got all this extra garbage at the beginning that I don't need. And the reason why is because it split everything at chapter. And also I noticed that if I were to, uh, let me take this problem one step at a time for you. So we got chapters by doing data.split. Now that I've got chapters like that, I don't want all this extra information before. I want to get rid of it. Now I can either delete it in the text file or I can just ignore it and handle it all in Python. And I can do that. So what it's done is it's indexed everything before chapter and provided that as index zero. So what I can do is I can create a new object or I can just do this and pass in one colon. And what that's going to do is it's going to bring everything from the first item in the index, which is this Roman numeral I, and simply print off everything there. So what I wanna do is make this actually, I'll put it up here, and get rid of that because now it's indexed at one. And now what I have, if I print off chapters, you'll see now I've got everything like that. But I also have a problem. I see that this little gap is existing here and that's easily solved. I can simply do this. And now I have another way that I can actually solve for my chapter question about how many chapters there are. Uh, now that everything is stored as a list, I can simply print off the length of chapters. And this is a good way to double check that you're working with your data and you've manipulated it correctly. So now I can work with Alice in Wonderland as a data set chapter by chapter. What if I wanted to extract every chapter name? Well, let's work with that. So I've got chapters, I can print this off, and I notice that after, um, after each chapter, so I see uh, chapter one, period, space, now I notice that there is something else happening. I've got two line breaks right here. And let's just see if this is actually the case. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a loop statement and I'm gonna go through each chapter. So for chapter and chapters, now I can actually start breaking everything down. So in this loop, I'm gonna print off each chapter. Let's just do this so you can kind of see what's happening. And what it's done is it's printed off each chapter individually. You can't tell because it's so long. There you scroll all the way up and it's printed everything off. So great, so now I can work with each chapter individually in memory. So what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna try to extract the title of each chapter. 
So what I'm going to look for is a pattern that I see in each of these chapters. I see that there is a period, right, a period and a blank right before the chapter title, at least in the first chapter, and I see that there's two line breaks. So if I wanted to create a, find the title, I would make an object called title, and I would say chapter.split, and I would split it at the first instance of the period there. So I'm going to say one. So now I can print off title. And what this is going to do is it's going to separate everything. So now what it's going to do is it's going to separate the actual t uh, chapter number. So I can probably say uh, chapter number. Let's do this for this. Make these two different objects. So I'm going to say chapter number is equal to that. And this is going to be equal to zero because I'm going to index the zero position in this list. And then what I can do is I can print off chap number. And you'll see I've extracted all the different Roman numerals. Fantastic. I'm going to get to why this is important now. So now what I can do is I can look for a different piece of metadata. And now I'm going to actually look for the chapter. So what I can do now is I can do the same thing I did up there. So chapter.split. And instead, I'm going to grab that second index. So now when I print off chapter, or title, sorry, I've got all the actual uh, chapter information, but I still don't have that title yet. So now what I can do is I can add another line on this. I can say dot split. And I want to split it at the first instance of that double line break. And when I do that, what did I do wrong? <laughs> All right. Title.split one. All right, we'll just do this manually. Hmm. All right, so I have everything right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just do this manually. For some reason, that's not working. So I'm going to do title.split, and I'm going to split it at these NN, and that should create a new index, and it has. And then all I have to do now that I've split it at the NN, I can say title is equal to what this is going to do is create a new title object for me, since I've had to do it step by step for some reason. And what I'm going to tell it is that I want to grab the position zero. So now when I print off title, oop, there we go. I get all of the chapter numbers and the chapter titles. So now what I have, and this is important, this might not look that significant, but what I have now is I've read all of this information and I've been able to extract from it and analyze what these specific titles are. Uh, so I've got not only the chapter number, but the chapter title now stored as metadata. And I've also been able to break down all the different chapters in this entire thing. So this is when... Uh, this is why I'm kind of showing you all this in this little, probably a longer video than it needed to be. This is how we can analyze a text file. Oftentimes your text files are going to be long texts like Alice in Wonderland. And the way in which you're going to analyze a text file is no differently than how you would analyze a um, any other string in Python. You're going to apply the exact same functions, the exact same methods to a text file that you would to a string, because really once you import it, you're reading it as a long, long string. And when you start thinking about text files as data, you can see that you can start to extract some pretty cool information from it. And so if I wanted to, for whatever reason, uh, break down all these titles further, I could do a title.split. I could see what individual words are in these text files. So I've got all of that. And now what I can do is I can make something unnecessary, uh, title words equals, and we're going to make a list outside of this. And what we're going to say is we're going to say title words dot append. And this is going to make all these words into a list. And now we can print off title words and we get essentially all the, uh, all the words that are in every single one of these uh, lists. And this is just kind of something that's pretty cool, I think. Uh, so this is how you can actually go through, or we can do something like this, actually make it, if you want to see all the t words that are used for whatever reason, uh, for, now we can do for word and words, and what this is going to do is it's going to go through and read this whole list, we can do something cool, we can, uh, let's do uh, title 
words.append. Now we'll just add each word in. And now what we've got is, whoop, what did I do wrong? For word and words. Oh, there we go. Accidentally forgot to have the final apostrophe there. Now we got every single word in all of this, all these titles rendered as their own individual thing. And we can do some cool stuff like we can sort it. Um, we can sort the list. We can go through and delete duplicates. We can just extract capital uh, letters. We can do all the things that we can do to a list and a string now. And if you wanted to see what word appears in the most common in Alice in Wonderland's titles, now you can actually find that answer. My point is you're only limited uh, in Python by what you want to achieve. So if you don't want to achieve anything great, you can still do that in Python. If you want to achieve something super complicated, you can do that as well. All this is so that you can start analyzing texts and start thinking about texts as simply data. And this is how you do it. You simply read it into Python as a long string and treat it just like a long string and start to analyze it. That's all for this video. In the next video, we're going to kind of go through uh, pretty quickly uh, a couple different things, mainly just Excel, XML, and Pandas in the next few videos. And then we're going to jump right in and start talking about how to make simple GUIs with uh, TK Enter. That's all for now. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this, please like and subscribe down below.